Hi guys, it's uh, Steve from Vintage Classics, back with another video. Uh, it's been, uh, I don't know, about three weeks since my last one. I'm falling a little bit behind. Uh, I'm trying to do one a week. Hopefully I can get back on that pace again. Today I thought I'd show you some um, some uh, 1970s hockey. Mainly I've been, if you've been following any of my videos, this is the fourth one in the series so far. Um, it's all been raw cards. I haven't really shown anything graded yet. I eventually will get into the graded cards. I don't have... I have about 100 or so graded cards as of right now. Um, obviously that uh, yeah, is growing a little bit. I just picked up a 1956 um, Topps Roberto Clemente in the PSA 3. I should be getting that in a few days. Uh, really happy to get that as Clemente is uh, one of my favorite players of all time. Um, obviously I'd like to add his rookie card next and that may be one day along with a Lou Gehrig card which is high on my list to acquire. Um, but I am going to show you some hockey cards today. So I I put little piles here, so bear with me for a minute. I'm going to start off with the 1969 and 70 Tops ones. Um, I like the way the set looks. Most of them are standard poses, but I have a few, one, two, three, six uh, great players from that, that time span, that era. First is Jean Rattel, most notably a famous New York Ranger. Um, later on was traded to my Boston Bruins, where he uh, also had a great career. He was part of the Phil Esposito trade, Espo going back to the other way, to New York. Here's um, Jean Rattel. Try to avoid that glare for you. It's card 77. Here's the back. Um, again, great hockey player. Next up is from the Chicago Blackhawks. You got Stan Makita. Um, I liked him a lot, number 21. Here's the card number 20, the back of it. One of the things I like about the old cards is, uh, as you can see, that the uh, cartoon character, uh, different every sport, baseball, football, basketball, hockey, they all had, the uh, backs were interesting. They had little drawings on there and stuff, but uh, these are nice classic cards. Like I said, um, I just like the design of them a lot. Next up for my Boston Bruins, you get the Chief, Johnny Busick. I had the opportunity to meet him. I've got a stick that I'll show one day, and I have a couple pucks and stuff signed by him. At a show in, uh, here in Massachusetts a couple years ago. It's card number five. Great Hall of Famer. All these guys I'm showing you, I should be saying, they're all in the National Hockey League Hall of Fame. Uh, next up from the Montreal Canadiens, my dreaded team, team I ranked for after with the Yankees is one of the ones I don't like, uh, but I do respect them a lot for all the Canadian fans that are out there. Uh, but Henry Richard. Card number 64. Again, these are the Hockey Hall of Fame, as you guys all know. We have another Canadian following suit the captain, Jean Bellevue. Um, classy player, uh, Lady Bing type player, um, along the lines of Jean Rattel, one of the ones I showed you earlier. Very clean, Patrice Bergeron today. Um, well respected, just a great player. Card number 61. Right. Next up, another Canadian, the, the gold, one of the goaltenders, one better known as Gump Worsley. Um, many, many years, one of the last goalies to not wear a mask in the NHL. I don't know if he was the last one, but he was definitely one of the last ones. Uh, him, Eddie Jacquemin for the Rangers, another one, didn't wear a mask in the end. This is card number 56. Cla another classic player, um, really liked him a lot. Next up, I'll show you some 1970 and 71 cards. I only got a couple of them to show you. I have some more put away, but uh, but today I just picked out a couple. One's Brad Park, great Brad Brad Park, uh, a New York Rangers Hall of Fame defenseman, also part of that trade with Espo going to the Rangers uh, in the 70, late 70s was uh, us getting uh, Brad Park along with Jean Rateau. This is card number 67. Again, it's Brad Park's rookie card. I will probably eventually get this card graded. Uh, I'm not expecting a high grade on it, but it's, it's in, I would say it's in good shape, well-centered, a little, couple of little soft corners, but that's to be expected with, again, from that time period. Um, card 67, here you can see the back of it. Again, like I explained to you earlier, there's the cartoon figure on the back. So that's Brad Park. Um, another, this guy wasn't a great player. He was a very good player. 
Uh, he's mo most notably known for the restaurant and donut chain in Canada. They were in the United States for a while. I don't believe there's too many of them left in the U.S., but they're a huge chain. The equivalent of Canada's Dunkin' Donuts is Tim Horton. Um, this is card number 59. He has pictures as a New York Ranger here. Uh, here's the back of the card. Again, card number 59. Uh, Tim Horton, you know, he amassed a lot of penalty minutes. He was a rugged player. Um, so he, in that morning, he was assistant captain with the Rangers. Had a good little career. Unfortunately, died young. Um, but like I said, the, uh, those of you who may be watching this up in Canada would, will be very much aware of the Tim Horton's restaurants. Uh, I only went to have the opportunity to go there a couple of times, but I enjoyed it. So we have our Dunkin' Donuts on here. Uh, next up, I'll show you some 1972 and 73 cards. I have four of those to show you. First one is the New York Rangers great defenseman, Eddie Jockerman. Um, again, he was, like I mentioned a minute ago, he was one of the last ones too, to also not wear a mask in the NHL. Uh, this is card number 165. I'm working on completing this whole set, so at this time. Then you have uh, uh, the Minnesota North Stars, a team that uh, no longer exists, as, as, as all you guys know. Um, but a team that I used to I used to like them. I had a Minnesota North Stars shirt as a kid. Obviously, I was a Bruins fan and won. But I actually had a Blackhawks shirt and the Minnesota North Stars. But uh, here's Cesar Maniago, card number 104. The old brown uh, pads and stuff. Uh, I just love the look of the old vintage cards. Card number 104 has the back of it. Okay. Next up is uh, Phil Esposito's brother, Tony Esposito. Great Chicago Blackhawks uh, goaltender. Um, he used to have the butterfly stance. Uh, again, one of the greatest goalies uh, to play in the NHL history. Um, and there's that classic Chicago Blackhawks um, original six jersey, which that's the jersey I had as a kid I was telling you about. Here's card number 20. And there's the back of it. Next up from the Detroit Red Wings, uh, you got Marcel Dion. Uh, started his career off in Detroit, had some good years. Uh, most people remember him mostly for the LA Kings. Um, he was not the biggest guy. In fact, I list him here as 5'8", 170 pounds, but he's a great goal scorer, puck handler. This is Marcel Dion from the Detroit Red Wings. Another one of the original six teams in the NHL, card number 18. All right, let's see what we have next. Uh, I'll show you some 74, 75. I think I only picked out two. Yep. Um, the first one is the great Montreal goalie. Unfortunately, came up great in many series against the Boston Bruins, um, but it's Ken Dryden for the Montreal Canadiens. Great, great goalie. Left hockey early to go back to uh, being a lawyer up in Canada. Um, Big, big goaltender at that time. A lot of goalies today are, are his size. Some are even bigger. But you got to remember, in the nineteen seventies, to have a goalie that's six foot four was pretty much unheard of. So that card number is one fifty five. Here's the back of it. Okay. The other one I picked out is uh, my all time player, favorite player of all time. Um, one of the greatest players, if, if not the greatest. I don't know. That's up for another, a debate or another uh, video, I guess is uh, Bobby Orr. It's a shame his career had to be cut short um, due to injury, but uh, again, um, I've never seen a player like him. I saw him as a young kid play, had the opportunity to meet him, get a couple autographs from him. Uh, very nice gentleman, very um, caring. You can tell that, that uh, not saying that today's players aren't, but uh, he's definitely a, a person that uh, has a lot of class, very classy. Card number 130. That's the back of it. All right. Um, next up, I'll show you. Well, <laughs> seeing I just showed you Bobby Orr there. Um, here, unfortunately, the Bruins allowed him at the end of his career um, to leave and go play for the Chicago Blackhawks for a very. He played for I think two seasons or whatever. But here he is pictured in a 1976-77 tops card in a Chicago Blackhawks uniform. As you can see, that uniform has been airbrushed. That was a common practice uh, by Tops back then. A uh, player would change teams and they would um, 
He's obviously in a Bruins uniform there. Where they, they would just paint that over with the colors or the logo and the logo of the new team that he went to. Um, this is card 213 of Bobby. Again, not the best card for a Bruins fan to see him in a, in a, uh, a team uniform other than our, our Bruins. Um, here's a 1980-81 record breaker card, uh, card number three of the, uh, the great Wayne Gretzky. Never seen a goal scorer like him. Again, card number three, here's the back of it. He sure could put up some, some goals. He, I mean, that Edmonton team, um, they did my Bruins in a few times in the playoffs, but uh, they they were a fun team to watch. Um, I think I forgot to show you these. Here's, here's some 73, 74 tops. I got three of those to show you. Um, first one up is a, a great Buffalo Sabre player, Gilbert Perot. Uh, card number 70. And wearing the classic Sabres home uniform at that time. Uh, like I said, card number 70 is the back of it. Part of the French Connection. You guys that uh, followed hockey then will know uh, Rene Robert and Richard Martin and Gilbert Perot formed that famous Buffalo Sabres line, the French Connection. Uh, next up, um, this guy just died this past year. Um, killed the Bruins, I don't know how many times. <laughs> but uh, the flower, Guy Lafleur. Very, very gifted player. Um, had a lot, you know, played for Montreal, had a lot of respect for him as a player. Card number 72. That one. And this is this next card, it's not a famous player, it's not a Hall of Famer. Uh, in fact, a lot of people probably don't even remember the guy. But the, the thing that's unique about this card that I like is probably the only card that I know of, I could be wrong, you guys, if you want to let me know in the comments section or whatever, is um, Phil Roberto of the Blues. But what's unique about it, he's actually shown fighting Billy Smith of the Islanders. <laughs> in today's NHL and in today, the way the world is say, I highly doubt uh, a card manufacturer would uh, make a card with two players fighting, as you can see. I'll make it a little closer for you. But that is Phil Roberto. It's card number 151. Just, just a, you know, a unique card to have something different, uh, something to talk about. People, your friends are hanging around or whatever, and you, know, you show them that you don't see very many, like I said, like that. Um, next up, I have a actually a 1980 card from um, Tops. It shows the four teams that when the NHL and the uh, WHA merged, there was four teams that joined the league. It was the Edmonton Oilers, the Hartford Whalers, the Quebec Nordiques, and the Winnipeg Jets. Uh, all four of those are depicted on the front of this, their team logos at the time. It's card number 261. Good thing I have my glasses on. There you go. But uh, it's a, again, it's a iconic card. It's nice. It's got the, the logos of the different teams on there. And just a nice card, nice card to have in your collection if you don't have it. Um, next up is a player that we acquired from the Rangers. Uh, it's a 1975-76 Rick Middleton rookie. He's pictured in a Rangers uniform. Great, great Bruin. Nifty, his nickname. Um, I really enjoyed watching him play. He really could put the puck in the net. Uh, played on some great teams. Uh, but he was uh, definitely a great player. It's card number 37. There. I think that's all I have. I wanted to tell you guys, if you guys don't um, read this, I know everybody now uses comps on eBay and... Uh, different sites to get pricing and everything, but a really good magazine that Beckett puts out that uh, has a lot of good stories and information on vintage cards is uh, the Vintage Collector. This is the latest edition with Johnny Bench on the cover. Not that I don't work for Beckett. I don't, I don't know if you guys think I'm pushing it because for a reason. I just really enjoy this. I gain a lot of information out of it. As you can see, it does have pricings. Um, and like any other Beckett price guide for vintage cards, but more importantly, It'll tell you a lot of uh, stories um, on different sets, different values on cards um, from the vintage era. You, it only goes up to 1979. I, I've been, I should subscribe to it. I've been buying every issue. I have every issue since they came out. I believe it comes out um, six times a year, I want to say, five or six times a year. So that if you don't read that, uh, if you get a chance and you happen to see it out there, I highly recommend it, especially if you're, if you're into vintage cards. You, you can't go wrong with this. You'll gain a lot of information, a lot of insight. But again, like I said, I know everybody 
tends to if you're I'm I'm in I think I told you in the first video I'm in the hobby for um, the collecting purposes I just love the cards I've been doing it since 1970 my grandmother bought me a pack way back as a little kid that's what got me started and um, I just do it because I love the cards I I don't I'm not in for the money I'd rather trade with somebody if any of you guys ever want to are interested in trading whatever I have quite a few uh, vintage cards I have some modern day cards and newer stuff but I, I really love the old stuff. Um, but that's that's what my thing is so most of what i will show you is going to always probably be vintage i'll probably mix in some bobbleheads and uh autographs and things like uh figures mcfarland starting lineups whatever um but if there's anything you want to see that i haven't shown or you're interested in seeing that i do have I, i'm more than happy to make another a video of that um i like i said to you before i really enjoy trading um i'd much rather trade than sell something I've, anything i've ever sold is something i have a lot of and I just take that money and I reinvest it, buy something that I don't have. Um, like I said, I know I know. I tell you guys all the time, I'm a great hobby and I, I, I love this hobby. Um, it's been a part of my life now for almost 53 years. Um, so um, it's just something that to me is enjoyable. Um, I got a very, I got a beautiful wife who's very supportive, um, helpful. She's in fact, she's the one that bought me the um, Roberto Clemente card this past weekend uh, for our anniversary coming up. But the um, you know it helps again like i always say to you guys just uh buy what you can afford um not nobody i don't care who you are nobody can afford to buy all the stuff that's out there i mean there's just so many especially if you're going to collect newer products there's just so much um product and items to choose from that nobody could be able to buy all that uh, it's just you know you have to be a, a billionaire to be able to do all that so just buy what you can afford or buy a player or collect the sets or uh, whatever whatever makes you happy uh, in, in, within your, your price frame, your constraints, whatever. So, but until my next video, I always end up by saying the same thing to you guys. Keep on collecting. Uh, it's a great hobby. Um, hopefully it grows and continues to grow every year. It's, uh, like I said, it's been a part of my life all these years. I can't imagine not having um, sports memorabilia, sports cards to collect and stuff. So um, please, by all means, uh, if you want to subscribe to my channel or, or like, if you like it, go ahead and click on that for me um and I, I i'll try to get back to try to making a video once a week or every other two weeks or whatever but uh until we till i have another one i hope you guys have a great uh week rest of your week and that uh, you keep on collecting and um best of luck to you all right take care bye